good. You turn your Bible with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4. Book of Philippians chapter 4. Most of the time, problems arise in people's lives because the mind is not right. The mind is not right. Now, we say about what is mind and what is heart. The Bible says, keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? So it is an intellectual or an emotional uh, decisions that we make or think a heart or a mind. When the Bible speaks about a heart, it is not speaking about the uh, physical part of your body, but it's speaking about a place where you think and make an intellectual decision and emotionally you are felt at that point. You, uh, the Bible talks about mind or heart and these two are the same. <clears throat> and so the Bible tells us that a heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Bible says keep thy heart with all the legion for out of it are the issues of life. The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse number 5 um the Bible says, let the mind of Christ be in you. As a Christian, we are called to have the mind of Christ. This morning, my question to you would be, before I enter into the message, how many of you can say, brother, I do have the mind of Christ? Can we sincerely today say, I have the mind of Christ in me? I have the desires like Christ is, the passion like Christ is, the obedience to the Father's will as Christ is. Do you have the mind of Christ? The other day I was talking to somebody and I asked the guy, Man, I need your help. And I asked him in front of his father. The sad thing, it came like an arrow in my heart when he said, I need to ask my mother. While his father was in, right there in the same room. This tells me a big story about what's happening in the home of Christians today. Who rules, who wears the paint in the house. Who rules the house is the father or the mother. How many of us do have, have this mind of Christ in us? That teaches us that as the Father, as Jesus was obedient to the Father's will, so should I be obedient to my parents. And above all, I see that my Father takes the place of God in my home and God be obedient to Him. And every wife should say, I am submissive to my husband as, as, I, am, as, as I am submissive to the Lord. How shameful it is when a, when a daughter or a, a son would say that I need to ask my mother right in the presence of the father. What an insult it is for a father. And the tell that father has no business at home. How are you raising up your children today? Ladies, are you ruling your home or you say my, father, my husband is the head and I give him that. Voluntarily, I submit my life to my husband as I submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Husband, are you the one who is taking wisdom, who is directing your family? Are you the one who is the head of the family? Or you have given up because you thought it's not working out? But that is not what the message is, but it's about the mind of Christ. And every individual should have this mind of Christ as a Christian. It's, it, uh, what happens today is we are Christian. People are born again. But then they are not controlled by the Holy Spirit. A Christian who is controlled by the Holy Spirit is a man or a woman who has the mind of Christ. And is not controlled by flesh but the Spirit of God controls his mind. The Bible tells us in 
In Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. It's a good verse that we memorize. And, and I do believe that many of you here has memorized this word. If not, maybe as we look into this message today, that this verse will be a memorized verse for you and for me. He uses the word in verse number 8. He uses the word finally in the first word. Verse number 8 of Philippians chapter 4. Why does he use the word finally? I think I gave up my wrong reference in the beginning when I said Philippians chapter 5 verse 2. It was Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, I guess. Right? Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now what is the mind of Christ? How can I have the mind of Christ? And the problem today among the believers of Bible believing Christian is we take the we take uh, we take certain uh, doctrines or certain opinions or view, views into an extreme position where we don't see the other side of Christian life or and the, and, and the feel good or the Pentecostal or or uh, this um, this uh, what do you call it? Feel good churches they have taken one part of the opinions to another extreme and they cannot see the other side of the Bible. But as a Christians, it's not about the Baptist church. It's about the Bible. I'm not a Baptist first, but I'm a Bible believing Christian first. I'm a Baptist because of my doctrinal position. And we all have to understand this. We are not the, the word Baptist is not important for us first. If Christian or a Bible believing Christian is not important. If you're ashamed to say that you are a Bible believing Christian, then, then uh, no titles of church name will work anywhere or will do no favor to you. First and foremost, we are Christians, Bible-believing Christians, because we are saved by the grace of God, and because we believe the Bible, and we are Baptists because of our biblical or a doctrinal position that we take in. The doctrines we believe what the Bible teaches. And so some of them today, we think that as a Bible-believing Christian, we say, man, we got to be hard like a military-minded, and our doctrines should be so strong and hard. And then we forget about, we, we try to be, we, we, we preach about the lioness of Jesus Christ. We forget to inform people about the lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. The character of lamb. And here we find the, another part of Christians uh, who think that they have to take it to a, such an extreme where they talk about the lamb of the Lord. But they forget the lion part of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where we come to take a balanced Christian life. We talk about the whole counsel of God. Amen. Amen. We got to preach about the love of God. We got to preach about the wrath of God. We got to preach about the Old Testament. We got to preach about the New Testament. We got to preach about Jesus, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, and Jesus, the Lion of Judah. Amen. Amen. Christian preaching or Bible preaching is not extreme, but Bible preaching ought to be balanced. The Bible says in verse number 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things <clears throat> are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, then all these things shall be prayed. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, O oh God, with the assurance that you love us so very much. <coughs> we love you and praise you. Help us to have the mind of Christ. 
and help us to be like Jesus Christ in our attitude, in our words, in our behaviors. May we draw closer to you, O God. May Christ's glory be radiant and reflected upon our lives and character. Lord Jesus, we pray that our Jesus today edify us and build us up. Build us up. Lord, I pray that thou give me the words of our things, that I may preach thy word in power, in authority, without compromising. And so, God, I pray that thou fill me with thy Holy Spirit. For with thy, without thy Spirit controlling me, I am just a handicap. Please help me, God. Cover me behind thy cross so that Jesus Christ will be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. 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 Philippians chapter <clears throat> 4, verse number 8. Can you believe it again? That's one. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. Think on these What do you think God wants us to focus upon these things that God has mentioned over here? When you look at, the, look at the life of Jesus Christ, because it is in context to chapter number 2, where we are told to have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Every Christian ought to have the mind of Christ. The problem today is when our mind is not right, our eyes are not right, our words are not right, our motives are not right, our attitudes are not right, and our actions are not right, and our response is not right. What is the cause? The mind is not right. We do not have the mind of Christ. But we have, when we have the mind of Christ, then our words will be right, our actions will be right, our attitudes will be right, our response will be right, our thoughts will be right, our looks will be right, our visions will be right. You know why? Because Christ is the one who controls our life. Amen? Amen. And so the Bible says finally, Finally, brethren. So it's not written to unbelievers. It is written to believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have believed in the word of God. Finally, brethren. Why? Because there are problems in Christian life. Because even Christians suffer. And, and, and of course, we can bear witnesses about our life. Frankly speaking, I can stand here and I say, I can say, I fail in this place so many times. And you can definitely say, you fail in this position so many times. Why do you think that so many, all those wicked thoughts would creep into your mind? The negative thoughts that does not bear fruit would creep into your mind. The problem is, we allow the world, it's like, <clears throat> how many offers? How many offers will allow strangers to come and talk to your young children, little children? Parents, just imagine your daughter is five, six, or seven years old. 
you just went and left your daughter somewhere near the gate and you went somewhere right? and you say and you see a young man or a, or a guy who will come and he's spending some time talking to your daughter do you think you will be pleased with it a stranger coming and talking to your daughter who is innocent will you tolerate that I don't think if you're right, if you're in right mind, as a parent, as a father and mom, you will be more protective and possessive of your children, so you will not allow a stranger to come and talk to your uh, innocent five or six or seven year old son or a daughter. But do you know, you're the same parents who will allow strangers to talk to your children just inside your living room, in front of the toilet glass. We won't allow our children outside to talk to us with the strangers, but we allow our children to sit there and allow the strangers to feed our children, our children's mind with wickedness that comes out from the toilet glass, which is television or a Halloween. Now, I'm not against TV as long as you are the one who controlling what you are watching. Amen? Amen? You are the one, should be the one who is controlling what you are watching. You make the right joke, I'm going to watch these because this will benefit. I'm not going to watch that because that's going to corrupt my mind. You go into a room, you go to a home, children are watching Mr. Bean. What is it? Joke. What is he doing? He's running around without clothes. The children are laughing. What you have done? You have allowed your children to watch a man walk around, run around naked, which you would not actually allow outside your home, literally, but you allow inside your home, right in your living room. Am I right, parents? I'm making you to think today. And how can we allow ours or our children to have the mind of Christ. And then you grow up. Say, oh, mommy, we watched this when we were little. We watched him going around naked. And then they come up up to 16 and 17. And then the other things become normal to anybody there. How do I fill, up, fill my mind with the thoughts of God? How do I, how do I, how many of you really like evil things to control your mind? I don't think anybody here. I think we all enjoy at the end of the day when we will go to sleep and, and we just let mind. This, today, I lived such a holy life. I did not allow the wickedness to creep into my mind. I did not allow anything that was evil to even bring a thought in my mind. What a wonderful day it was. I lived a holy life. Isn't that a beautiful thing to go to bed with? So I'm not saying that you should not watch. I'm saying you should control what you watch. You should make a choice what you watch. What are you watching? No. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. What the media will give us is false things. One of the president of America, the 16th president of America, I think, Abraham Lincoln. In those days when he became a president, many years ago, he said something, don't believe whatever is written in the internet. Those days he said, don't believe what is written, everything that is written on the internet. Because media will fill your mind with all the garbage. So what happens? Garbage in, what comes out? Garbage out. <coughs> garbage in, garbage out. And there is no place for God to get in. The mind of Christ to control us. As a Christian, we need the mind of Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, what is true? True is in accordance with fact or reality. And so the Bible tells us that we should think about the truth. When 
many times people will come and tell me about this and that and this and that and this and that and this. And I will listen. Now I changed everything. I say, okay, yes. okay, this person said this and this and this about me. What did you say in defense of me? You said nothing in defense of me. Then why do you want to share with me? Because that's going to corrupt my mind when I listen. And that's going to corrupt your mind when you listen. Amen? Amen. That's going to... Uh, uh, why, do you, why do we want to even rest upon certain things that will not benefit your mind, my mind, my brother's mind, my sister's mind, you, your parents' mind, your children's mind? Why? Be, uh, the Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, because Jesus, the mind of Christ, never thought about the false thing. Amen? Amen. How many times did Jesus speak about Buddha? Or Ganesh? Or Krishna? How many times did he preach on it? He never preached on it. Or he never thought about it. You know why? Because that's false. Amen? Amen. So many times I walked in some of somebody's house and and I see them sitting there while reading a book that they are not supposed to read. Sometimes it is a book that's written by some cults. But sometimes it's something that is really not going to benefit in any way. Even through knowledge or in spiritual. Maybe it's a social book. It benefits nowhere. And I tell them and I try to rebuke them and say, Man, you're reading such things. It's not going to benefit in any way. No, I'm increasing my knowledge. I got to know about everything. And then finally what happens when you allow a little window open for some kind of evil air to get in, that evil air is going to control your mind. Amen? Yeah. That's what happens. Oh, so many times. Somebody, I went into somebody's house and I saw reading a book that was written by the Seventh-day Adventists. I said, why are you reading that? What benefits will you get in reading about the Seventh-day Adventists? Oh, brother, I've been able to learn and I've been able to know what we believe in. Why do you want to spend time on the falls when you not even grasp the floor of the truth? Amen? Amen. There's so much to know about the truth and you have not even completed the truth. Why do you want to go in the falls? Are getting me? You see, when we spend time on the truth, there's so much that we need to know and so much that we need to enjoy, so much to fill our mind with. Don't waste your life in the lies and the falls of this world. You're going to benefit nothing. You want a pure mind, the mind of Christ. Is that your passion? You want to have the mind of Christ? And you and I need to think about the truth. Because these two things will benefit you. Amen? Amen. And, while, and, and the Bible says, let the mind of Christ be in you. What does that mean? This is what the mind of Christ. Thinking the truth. Thinking about the true things. Amen? So you and I should try to Reject or avoid that which is false. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, which means which are in accordance with a fact or reality. So on these things, you got to think about the truth. Not on the fall. We don't need what. Uh, we don't need to know what's uh, what's happening with these all the uh, things that we already know is false. You want to study and try what poisons will do to you. How many of you think you want to taste to know what poison will do to you? Come on. Anybody wants to taste? To see what the poison will do? No. Why? Because we already know that it's going to kill us. As simple as that. So let's not 
think about the fall, but rather think about the true things. Because that's the mind of Christ. That's how we can have the mind of Christ in us. The true things. Whatsoever things are honest. The Bible did not tell us to think about the false. It tells us to think about the true. The Bible doesn't think about, tell us to think about the dishonesty. It tells us to think about the honesty. Amen? Amen. <coughs> what is honest? Displaying integrity. A pride, not fraudulence or deceptiveness. You don't need to know that, those things. Why do you want to spend time in knowing about the deceptions? We need to study about the honest thing. So our mind is pure. When you are thinking about the truth and the honest thing, that's what you become. That's what you become. <coughs> you know, there's a great saying that says, tell me who is your friend and I'll tell you who you are. Parents, do you know who is a friend of your children? Because that's what your children will become. Is your child, is your son, your daughter very open to you as a friend? Are you the friend of your son and a daughter? Or you have allowed some stupid wicked guys out there in the world to become the friends of your son or a daughter. And that's the character that they will manifest. Or are you in accordance? Are you watching your children? Are you speaking to them? Are you training them up and disciplining them? What's happening? Do you know anything about your children? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. Jesus never thought about the dishonesty. He was an honest man. Amen? Yeah. He was honest. He was not speaking, with, uh, sitting down and thinking about all the dishonesties of life. For him it was a waste of time. And the Bible tells us that we need to have the mind of Christ. Spending time in honesty, in truth. The things that are displaying facts and integrity and a pride not fraudulent or deceptiveness. So let's let's make up, even before I finish this message, let's make up in our mind, decide and make a decision before the Lord and say, Lord, I won't be like you. This mind that is in me is corrupted and wicked and desperately wicked, oh God. And I want you to purify my mind today. I come and lay my life upon the Alter so that you will purify my mind and control my mind that I might have the mind of Christ. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. That should be our prayer, my beloveds. The mind of Christ. You know, when your mind is right, your health will be right. It's true. When your mind is right, you will be able to keep your head correctly. Because if your mind is not right, you know what? It's going to affect your health. Your physical condition will deteriorate because your mind is not right. Your mind will be tortured all the time with a false thing, with a dishonesty. It's going to torture your mind because you will have no peace. But when you are spending time in the truth and in honesty, you go to sleep, Fine in the night, worried about nothing. Am I right? Yes. That's true. That's true. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, righteous. The word just means honorable or righteous. 
you and I should spend time on righteousness. To think about the righteous thing. Listen to the righteous thing. Watch the righteous thing. Spend time with the righteous people. Have righteous friends. That's called just. The just shall live by which means the righteous will live by faith. And who are righteous? Everyone who is born again, who have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, are known as righteous people. You are righteous if you are the child of God. And if you are the child of God, then you are called to think over the righteous thing because a pig cannot sleep on the mattress of a king in a palace he'll go in a gutter but a son of a king or a daughter of a king lives in palace amen? amen and you are the child of god you don't spend time in a gutter with a pig but you spend time in the palace in the home of your father who is a king of kings and the lord of lords amen. so you are righteous because you're the child of god and because you're the child of God, you are the you are righteous. What you do is you think about the righteous thing. You think about the righteous thing. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, there's no negativeness, right, in this verse. Not a single thing is of negativeness. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Let me challenge you today. Okay? Let, let me challenge you today. Today is Sunday. A wonderful day. The whole day you have it in your hand. It's like an empty paper. You are in a good atmosphere. Right now your mind is filled with the word of God. The spirit of God is moving around us. And we are in the presence of God. We are among the children of God. And, once a, and the moment we finish this place, we go out of this room. My challenge to you today is, may you just spend your day today in verse number 8. As a challenge. Think only the truth. Think only the honest. Think only the just thing. Think only the lovely thing. Think only the pure thing. Think only good repose. Think only those which are virtue. And see in the end of the day when you go to bed, what a difference it will be. You can sleep so well tonight. Let me challenge you, beloveds. Today, me, let us all, Take a decision. Today, this is how it will be. Parents, you see your children doing something today. Tell them, you know what brother preached today? And let your children be reminded. And, and you and your children take this decision today to leave verse number 8 in your life. Okay? Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8 is for today. That no allowing. You don't speak anything about anybody. You don't speak any evil thing, any anybody's um, wickedness. You don't speak any evil, false, dishonest. You don't nothing. Just clean home today. Just the family. Just the truth. Just the honors. The just and the pure and the lowly. That's all you want to talk today. That's all you want to think today. Live a life today, the rest of your life today, with the mind of Christ and enjoy the presence of God. That's what will happen today. Okay? It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are pure. You know what purity means? Absence of impurity <coughs> is purity. Amen? Amen? This is a pure water. There's nothing mingled into it. It's pure water. It is absence of dirt, absence of mud, <coughs> absence of any bad thing. It's pure. <coughs> Our minds should be so. 
Our thoughts should be trained so that we are thinking about the pure thing. Because Christ never spent his time thinking or meditating upon the impure things. Amen. Pure, free from impurities. It has nothing to do with anything. So may, may, may today be the day you take a challenge, try today. I don't know how many of you have tried this ever before, but today, may it be today. I want to try today. Just live like Jesus did. I am not going to think about the dishonesty. I will not think on the untrue thing, on the false report. I will not think on the unrighteousness. I will not think on, on dishonesty. I'm just going to think about the true, honest, just, and pure. So I am mind to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And enjoy the mind of Christ within me. So I get the utmost taste of the mind of Christ as I live today. Take a challenge. Let the mind of Christ control you today. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, full of love, inspiring love, or affectionate. Think about these things. Think about the love for your children. Think about the love of God towards you and your love for God. Think how you can love your children, husband. Think how you can love your wife. Think how you can love your husband. Think how you can love your brothers and sisters. Think about that which brings love in you. Think about the word of God that tells you and shows you and manifests the love of God to you. Think about the sacrifice, what Christ did for you. Think about the sacrifice that God did as he gave his only begotten son. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, for unto us a child is born and unto us a Son is given. Think about that gift. Think about the love of God. Because that's lovely. Think about the lovely things that people did in your life. And think about the lovely thing that you did for somebody. Spend some time in spending thinking about the lovely thing. Forget about the evil things that has been done in your life by anybody. Let it not come and touch you today. Enjoy. <coughs> Enjoy the mind of Christ. Whatsoever things are lovely, the things that will inspire love for God, the people that will inspire the love for God. The books that will inspire the love of God. The very God who loved you. The very book that teaches. The Bible that shows the love of God to you. Spend your time in it. Don't think about the hateful things today. Avoid the hateful. When things that are negative comes, you know what you do when all this false and unjust and untrue and dishonest things that will come, try to come, resist it. The Bible says resist the devil and he will, he will flee, flee from thee. Amen. That's the promise, my beloved. God promises that when you will resist the devil, he will flee from you. And actually, when you draw nigh to God, who draws nigh to you? God draw nigh to you. That's where you get the power to resist the devil when you draw nigh to God. Drawing nigh to God. The secret of resisting the devil is drawing nigh to to God. Amen?
whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. So, gossip is bad report. Criticism is bad report. It's all bad report. Think about the good report. Think about the goodness. How many of you think Jesus spent time gossiping about somebody? Or listening to the gossip? Did you ever Jesus spend time in the Bible? And so if we are going to spend time in gossip, God's mind, the mind of Christ is not in us. And if we want the mind of Christ, we need to avoid this thing. So today's challenge is to be and allow Christ to control our mind so we enjoy the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's enjoy it today. It's beautiful. Okay? Resist the devil. Draw nigh to God. Whatsoever things are of good report. There be any virtue. A good report is good account presented usually in detail. A good account presented usually in detail. Something good that has happened. What is good happen in your life? Your salvation is the most beautiful things that has happened in your life. Amen? Amen. A good report is the blessings that you enjoy from, from your parents every day. A good report, you, you see how your husband provides your needs every day. A good report is how you see your wife taking care of the home every day. Good report. You, you don't spend time in gossip, you don't listen to anything, no negative things, no dishonesty, no false, no unjust, nothing. You want to think about the true, honest, just, Pure, lovely, and of good reports. Amen? If there be any virtue, moral excellences, good behavior, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Because these are the things that will allow you to enjoy the mind of Christ because that is the mind of Christ. And this is what will help you to have the peace of God in you. Amen? Amen. Oh brother, please pray for me. I have no peace. This is the only way. The Bible says, see what the Bible says. <clears throat> Verse number six. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Why? Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen? Amen. You see, when the God of peace is with you, then what is with you? The peace itself. Because God is peace. Amen? Amen. Peace is not God, but God is peace. Amen? Amen. But the problem is when you spend time in all the negative things, you know what you do to the God of peace? You cut him into piece by piece. Throw him out. You don't control my mind. I allow the garbage to control me. I allow wickedness to control me. I allow the false report and the gossip. I allow the false thing, the dishonesty, the untrue, unlovely. 
all these things. But God says, no, 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 we don't need such things. Because this is going to ruin our testimony. This is going to ruin our mind. This is not going to benefit you and me in any way. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So let me tell you before I finish my whole thing. People who have the mind of Christ are humble people. You getting me? People who have the mind of Christ are humble people. Because the humble people are the ones who think on these things. See, come to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. See what Philippians chapter 2 says. Verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse number 4. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in a fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross the mind of Christ is the humble mind because Jesus, if we are going to have the mind of Christ, then we are going to be like Christ. And he showed himself and became humble to the very will of God, humbled himself and became obedient unto that, even the death of the cross, showing submissiveness and humility. If you're a person of pride, that this is not going to have anything to do with you today. And if you're a person of pride, then you've got to pray to God and say, Lord, break me today. Break me, cut me, and, and chastise me, and make me like you. I have a problem. I have an issue. Deal with me, Lord. Jesus was a humble person. And if you want to have this mind of Christ, then you and I should be humble. Amen? Amen. This is the truth. A humble person will have the mind of Christ. Humility is what? That is, humility is the road towards the mind of Christ. Are you willing to be humble? Are you, are you going to be humble? Are you surrendering your life to Christ today? To be humble, to have the mind of Christ in you. The Bible tells you to think on all these things, not the negative things. It never tells you to think on those things which are untrue, or things that are dishonest, things that are unrighteous, things that are impure, things that are unlovely things of bad report. It did not say that. So you and I as Christians, we have no duty or business over the negative or the opposite thing of what Christ, the Word of God told us. You and I should spend time in what is told to us in the Bible. Amen? Yeah. Beloved, these are the only things that are going to keep your mind pure, cleansed, Healthy. And this is how you will grow. Because what happens? When you're humble, God will. What? Huh? When you're humble, what God does? He will lift you out. He'll exalt you. See in Philippians chapter 2. Verse number 8. And we found. 
on in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is him above every name. Amen. Amen. And it's the truth to you also because the Bible says the pride he knoweth afar off, but the humble he exalted in due season. Amen? Amen. Let us take a challenge this morning over here to obey what the Bible tells us, to spend time in thinking about the true, honest, just, lovely, pure, of good report. And if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things because these are the things that is going to keep your mind clean, pure, humble, and get you closer to God and you will have the mind of Christ. A few moments in silence. Every eyes closed, every head bowed. <clears throat> How is your life today? Okay.